Hi, this is uh, Dr. Imran Masood. Um, I'm going to demonstrate a complex cataract operation here with, in a patient with a corneal scar, dense cataract, small pupil, and a shallow anterior chamber. You can see here at the commencement of the case that the view is particularly poor. Um, we're not able to identify where the pupil is as it's stuck down due to posterior uh, synechii. We're doing a uh, temporal incision here, a three-step incision, and we then use a combination of viscomadriasis and instrumentation such as uh, mushrooms and Kuglin hooks to uh, free up the posterior synechii here. Uh, once we've uh, done that, a little bit more viscoelastic here to expand the pupil further. And then we, uh, in this case, we'll use a pupil expansion device, um, which I prefer. Um, in this case, it'll be a Malugin ring. And the ring is now being deployed here. The distal uh, part of the ring goes out, engages with the iris here. And then as the remaining rings are deployed, uh, in this case, uh, a bimanual technique was required in order to facilitate engaging the iris because the view was rather compromised, particularly um, at the top here. And you can see uh, us using two instruments to uh, get optimal fixation. At this point, uh, it is noticeable that the red reflex is more apparent in the inferior half of the cornea. And this is the area we're going to use uh, in order to uh, carry out the procedure. I'm going to use some vision blue here to stain the uh, anterior capsule, uh, in this case where the view is compromised. We use a sharp tipped uh, cystotome to initiate the uh, capsular axis tear. It's quite important in this case to uh, decenter the capsular axis inferiorly in order that the phaco emulsification can be carried out through an area of cornea that is relatively clear. So when we tear the axis, um, we try not to deliberately try not to make it central here. And you can see that despite the uh, opacification of the superior cornea, that the tear is visible um, because of the uh, capsular stain that we've used. Now at this point, we're going to concentrate on really making sure that the tear is propagated more inferiorly obviously being careful that we don't run out into the zonules. But here the tear um, is completed and we can see enough of the uh, lens here now to be able to perform uh, phaco emulsification uh, relatively safely. We perform hydrodissection here to free the lens and then we use a torsional handpiece, the Alcon Infinity System as I think this is very good for uh, dense uh, cataracts uh, in such complex cases. I like to create a little groove in the center in these cases to debulk the lens uh, before I uh, bisect the lens using a horizontal chop technique, which I believe uh, is least likely to stress compromised uh, zonules. So we can see there the lens being bisected into two halves. I also like, in these cases, to bisect the lens using the chopping instrument into as many small pieces as possible, and this really facilitates phaco emulsification uh, using less energy. Once we've uh, removed the uh, lens uh, using the phaco device, just getting the last segment here. Um, we are ready to perform a cortical cleanup. Now, cortical cleanup in this case um, should be relatively straightforward. Um, the point to note here is that the capsular axis uh, under the uh, opacified cornea, the edge is visible um, because of the capsular stain. And in order to engage the cortical material in this area, um, 
it's sufficient really just to go under this area um, and engage the vacuum on the device so that we can get hold of the, the, the cortex. We do have to be a little bit careful though because obviously the view here is compromised but we can see that we managed to get the cortical material in this area relatively easily. We then uh, inflate the capsular bag uh, with Provisc in preparation for implanting a one-piece uh, Rayner aspheric lens which is being injected here. Once we have injected the lens in we use a standard dialing instrumentation to uh, dial the um, lens into position. At this point we're ready to uh, remove the mal Eugen ring which we use uh, for which we use a, um, a mushroom to disengage the uh, ring under the wound uh, initially as you can see here and then once this has been di disengaged this ring is placed within the uh, Malugan ring introducing device uh, which is being inserted into the eye here and the hook is used on the tip of this this device to extract the Malugan ring and it comes out fairly fairly easily. At this point we're ready to uh, remove the viscoelastic from the eye uh, which we will do with a INA handpiece. And you can see the iris is, is fairly floppy in this in this case and has obviously suffered a little bit of trauma from the Malugan ring stretching the uh, sphincter. In these cases, um, I like to suture the wound uh, to ensure watertight closure. Thank you very much for your attention.